on this episode, we'll be attempting to put this thing back together. So I've been sitting here for the last hour or so, just moving the back window around and sort of playing with the roof height a little bit and where the back window is going to sit. And even though it's a little hard to see because it's not glued together, but I think that is the sweet spot. I think the flow across the roof, I mean, it looks super natural. The back window is, uh, laid down and the rear package tray is moved forward uh, just about six inches. I'm gonna keep looking at this and uh, kind of deciding what I'm going to do. But so far, uh, I absolutely like it. So I think I'm going to send it off to the customer and see what he says. And Hopefully he likes it. After all, I guess I don't get credit for any of the cars I build anyway, so who cares? I'm gonna start taking everything back apart, get everything squared up, and hopefully get the A-pillar completed today. So after spending about an hour or so getting everything square and lined up, this is about how it fits. Nice and tight back there. And each side is just off by a little bit. So I'm going to take and put a slice there and a slice there. And then realign everything back up and weld it tight. Uh, definitely one of the easiest A pillars I've ever done. Haven't had to move the cowl or anything, so that's uh, pretty easy. The uh, back window will be a complete nightmare, but eh, you know, you can't win them all, right? That seems to work. Now I'll weld it up. I got both the A pillars in and done, welded. Still need to do a little finish grinding. But I'm going to start the B pillars now so I can get everything sort of secured and squared up. Then hopefully get the doors done uh, before too long. So I took four inches exactly out of the A pillar. Now the B pillar will almost be a straight down drop. So I think I'm going to start with three and then start playing with it. And then I can sneak up on it and fit it just right. Using my same I think I'll just lean it back about an inch and go from there. Just uh, sneaking it up in there. Almost there. Maybe another. I don't know, half inch. This portion of the header is hitting the roof, so I need to cut that off before I can move farther anymore. Got a straight edge clamped in place. It's just about there. Still, uh, still just nudging. You'll see I have to line up those body lines a little bit, but uh, so far it's not too bad. That is 
is getting there. Just need to add this little filler spot, little hammer and dolly, and we'll move on to the door top. Starting to make this filler piece here. Got the top piece welded in. So now I gotta fill that gap in. So I made this piece here, which will go in and overlap, and then we'll come back and make this piece here so we can put the tack strip for the headliner in there. Just one little piece at a time. It really is just a, a little piece here, a little piece there. Eventually it comes together and you know be something. Get dirt on my lip. Let's go now. Hmm, nice. Mig welded right there in that groove. Uh, I'm not really what you call a very good upside down TIG welder, but this will work. Piece by piece and bit by bit. Got the B pillar and A pillar done. So with my lack of planning, I went ahead and laid this out incorrectly. Let me show you. When I cut this, I cut it here about an inch and a half above the drip rail. But what I failed to recognize is the header panel in there, which does not allow me to get a hammer and dolly in there very easily. So I got to come with some sort of special plan or dolly to get in there and work this out. Just a typical day, make more work for myself. Well, it's getting better. I did find some factory lead right here though. I've also got a ton of lead back here that I just can't wait to melt out. This is my pipe anvil, probably the most useful tool in my shop. It's really just a piece of three inch pipe with a 
one inch bar stock here, one inch square tubing here, used for forming sheet metal. It's great for doing trans tunnels and that type of stuff. It's got notches drilled in here, so you can use round bar and use it to shape different sizes and whatnot. It's got a square shank on both sides, so you can put, well, my sandbag there, and I've got a wood block and different types of dies, different anvils that can go on there for, for shaping. This thing is super handy. It's got all my hammers here, well, some of them anyway. And it's all on wheels, so I can move it around wherever I want. Uh, I would highly recommend if you're starting metal shaping to uh, build one of these first, because it's the most handy thing ever. So I managed to get both B pillars done today. So I think uh, next time I'll start the door tops and all the garnish moldings, and then eventually move on to the back here, which of course will be a much more of a challenge this area here just needs a small filler panel, which actually will line up pretty well. Same with up here, needs very minimal shaping and whatever. I'll just take and cut that down probably with uh, my grinder and made it up and weld it. This area here, I gotta get rid of that lead. So I'll probably take and cut this out in this direction here so I can bring this over and trim it possibly up into this area here, and make it just a small patch. Really, in the scheme of things, this is actually a pretty easy chop. Sometimes you just get lucky. So after spending a significant amount of time making sure this thing is actually square, I got everything clamped into place where it's going to have its final destination, as they say. Uh, the back has moved forward a total of five inches. And then snuck up under the top there, so that actually worked out really well because the crown is just about perfect. Weld that all up and give it a little love with a handheld planching hammer. So this area here clearly doesn't line up. So this here I can just cut butt weld. This area here will lay perfectly with just a filler panel. So I'm going to take and trim this back. It's about there make a new panel from here to about this area here to blend in. That'll also get rid of this big lead chunk. That should, uh, that should help. Hopefully it shouldn't be uh, too difficult. Eh, just a little bit of metal shaping to do. Not too much. you know the pain I'm trying to uh, find enough space to do just about anything I do a lot of rearranging So making a little progress, I need to trim this back here because it sort of arches up in the middle there and it's causing me a little trouble. So I plan on cutting it back to about an inch from the edge here and then I'll be good, I believe. Well, I can try. It's always kind of a guess, but uh, you know, nothing worse than cutting off too much metal and having to make metal. The one thing with this cart, take my fucking headphones off, dumbass. <laughs> there we go, sexy again. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, uh, this entire car uh, must be as heavy as god awful because it's uh, it's almost totally 18 gauge. 
The deck lid alone uh, is almost a two-person job to open up. It is super heavy. Uh, hope to God there was never any children crushed to death in that thing, because uh, bad news. Although it's quite easy to weld because it's so thick. Ah, fuck. That, I'm going to say, is ready to weld. Do the final fitment and start uh, tacking it in place. So what I'm using is my cutoff tool to trace the two panels, trim out the fat, and then it'll have a nice consistent gap. These little wheels, as you can see, are uh, extremely thin. I think it's like 16th of an inch or less. It's not much thicker than this piece of sheet metal. So in theory, once I'm done, it should end up having a, a zero gap or super close to it. It's kind of the easiest way as opposed to using tin snips anyhow. The cutoff wheel is a 1 32nd thick, which is uh, pretty damn tight. I think that's about as good as we're going to get. Plus, I ran out of clamps, so there's not much more I can do. But this is all tight here, so I'm going to go ahead and burn the bottom, or at least get it tacked in place, and then move it to the top. Got the panel tacked in place. Now I'll planish those out. Finish well. All right. Got that all welded in. Also, pack the corners down here. Now I'm going to clamp all this up, take my saw and cut, uh, start in the center there and work my way to the edge and weld it along the way and that should be done there, hopefully, with any luck. Or I'll screw it up, I'm not sure, I don't know. By no means do I have any idea what I'm doing, but I've watched a couple of videos on the internet, so I can probably figure it out. So that gives me a nice gap. So I just need to tighten it up a little bit and I'll start from the center and weld this side fully, then start the other side. Good times. So uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Please subscribe, buy a shirt, whatever, or delete. I don't care.
So that gives me a nice gap, so I just need to tighten it up a little bit and I'll start from the center and weld this side fully, then start the other side. Good times. All welded up, one piece. All right, now time to planish it out. I've got the back just about metal finished and then the top area of the roof, but I can't get in there to finish it out because the bracing is still in there. So I'll have to do that afterwards. Uh, so we're gonna move on to the quarters and figure out what to do here. So the car had a drip rail that ran all the way down the door, but uh, I'm not going to retain that because it has this little natural lip here, which I think looks better. So I'm going to pull this line here and have it run and dip down into the body line. So it looks like it's natural and then fill that piece all together. And yes, I know I said I should have started with the doors, but uh, you know, you know how that goes. So let's get going. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and cut this area out here. Got all that lead here I gotta get rid of. So instead of melting all the lead out and trying to rework that panel, which is about three eighths of an inch thick, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it along this line here, and then down to the body line, and just make a whole new panel for this area here. That way I can blend it all in, do a little trimming there. I do have a little lead in this area here, which I don't know, maybe I'll do something with. It doesn't seem to be much there. So, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, just a little bit of lead in there. This piece weighs about 10 pounds. The lead is extremely heavy. So this little transition should help uh, make things a smidge easier. This thing is starting to flow something beautiful. So playing with my uh, paper pattern here, this is how I think I'm going to have the roof line flow off that drip rail. Uh, so it's actually a relatively uh, flat panel, so it should be simple to make in theory.
break out my handy uh, homemade uh, bead roll over here and uh, see if I can't get that line uh, not too screwed up. take and finish rolling this bead into the panel here and see if I can't totally unscrew this thing up. Just about got it finished, liking the way that line flows. Still got a little more finish work to do, but uh, I think that is going to work out. Comes off that top line and flows on down to the body line there. I guess I'll start the other side tomorrow. Oh yeah, in this large hole here. So I think I'll end this video here. That'll give me a chance to get uh, everything kind of tightened up when we come back, or I come back, or whatever. I'll do the door tops, the rest of the uh, tail pan there, the catwalk area. Let's see, refit all the glass, wing windows, garnish moldings, and on and on and on. To uh, chop this car, it's realistically about 100 to 130 hours worth of work. So. Not one of the more difficult ones, but definitely labor-intensive. Uh, anyways, thanks for uh, watching. Please subscribe. See you next time.